Chemistry lecture number 58, stoichiometric mass-to-mass -mass conversion. Stoichiometry is the calculation of relative quantities of reactants and products in chemical reactions. Stoichiometric calculations often try to determine how much product can be made from a given amount of reactant. To illustrate the meaning of stoichiometry, suppose we have a formula for making a cake. So we have three apples plus four eggs make one cake. That's our formula. How many cakes can be made from six apples? Now you might be able to do this in your head, but I'm going to show you how to factor label this. So we need to convert apples into cakes. We're going to convert six apples into cakes. And if you look at the equation, three apples will make one cake. So you take the number you want to convert, six apples, put it over one. Now we want to go from apples to cakes. I have apples on top. I want to get rid of it. So I put three apples on the bottom and one cake on top because three apples yields one cake. Apples cancel. Six divided by three gives me two cakes. So that's the basic procedure we're going to use in stoichiometry to figure out how much of something uh, we're trying to predict. Now instead of using a baking formula to calculate the number of cakes you can make, uh, let's take a chemical reaction and calculate the amount of product you can make. So Aluminum and oxygen forms aluminum oxide. How many grams of aluminum oxide can be made from 12 grams of aluminum? We'll use the following steps to solve mass-to-mass -mass problems. Identify the known and the unknown compounds. Find the molar mass of the known and unknown compounds. Set up fractions. Solve by factor labeling. There's supposed to be an R here, factor labeling. <coughs> You should memorize this outline. This is the outline we're going to use to solve all the problems today. Grams of known to moles of known, moles of known to moles of unknown, moles of unknown to grams of unknown. All right, so here's the equation rewritten, and here's the uh, question again, and here's the overview of how we're going to solve it. All right, so first we need to identify the known and the unknown. 12 grams of aluminum, that's the known. This is the known. The known is the element where they tell you the uh, quantity that exists. So since they tell you you have 12 grams of aluminum, aluminum is the known. What's the unknown? How many grams of aluminum oxide? So they're asking for grams of aluminum oxide. This is the unknown. Grams. So aluminum oxide is the unknown. So now that we know the known and the unknown, we have to figure out how much one mole of each weighs. On the periodic chart, aluminum is 27 grams, rounded to three figures. And then you'll have to figure out yourself how to figure out one mole of aluminum oxide, but it comes to 102 grams per mole. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna convert along here. So we start with what they give us, 12 grams of aluminum. We'll put that over one. We're going to convert that all the way down here to grams of unknown. All right, <coughs> excuse me, I have grams of aluminum on top. I want to go from grams to moles. If I want to get rid of grams of aluminum on top, there has to be grams of aluminum on the bottom. So I put 27 grams of aluminum on the bottom and one mole of aluminum on top because one mole is 27 grams. And I've gone from grams of known to moles of known. Now I want to go from moles of known to moles of unknown. I have moles of aluminum on top. I want to get rid of it, so I need to put moles of aluminum on the bottom. It looks like four moles of aluminum will give two moles of aluminum oxide. So I put four moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom and two moles of, I'm sorry, four moles of aluminum on the bottom and two moles of aluminum oxide on the top. And that way, the moles of aluminum will cancel and we'll be left with moles of aluminum oxide. So we've gone from moles of known to moles of unknown. Now I want to go from moles of unknown to grams of unknown. So I have moles of aluminum oxide on top. I want to get rid of it. I need to put moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom. And then I'll put 102 grams of aluminum oxide on the top here because one mole of aluminum oxide makes 102 grams. So in this step right here, I've gone from moles of unknown to grams of unknown. Okay, so what happens is grams of aluminum cancel, moles of aluminum cancel, moles of aluminum oxide cancel, and we're left with grams of aluminum oxide. So 12 times 2 times 102 divided by the product of these numbers give me 22.7 grams of aluminum oxide. So what this all means is that from 12 grams of aluminum uh, you can produce 22.7 grams of aluminum oxide. Let's do another problem. 
Here's magnesium and chromium chloride producing chromium, the element, and chromium chloride. How many grams of chromium chloride are needed to make 0.84 grams of magnesium chloride? Now, notice in this one, they say how many grams of chromium chloride? So they're asking for grams of chromium chloride. So that means this one's the unknown. All right, are needed to make 0 0.840 grams of magnesium chloride. So this is the known, 0 0.840 grams. So that is the known. So notice this problem does not ask for the amount of product uh, that's given to us. So they tell us the amount of product. Instead, it asks us for the amount of starting material, uh, chromium chloride. Um, so magnesium chloride is the known because they tell us how many grams there are and chromium chloride is the unknown so it's uh, different from the previous problem the previous problem the product was the unknown and the starting material was the known here we reversed it we want to know how much starting material we need to produce a certain amount of product okay well now that we know the uh, known and the unknown let's go through the drill uh, chromium chloride we have to figure out how much one mole of that weighs and if you add it up it's 159, point, uh, 159 grams per mole Magnesium chloride, well, one mole of that is 95.3 grams per mole. All right, we're going to follow this outline to uh, convert it. So this is the known. We take this and put it over one. So we're going to go from grams of known to moles of unknown. Grams of magnesium chloride on top, I want to get rid of it, so I need grams of magnesium chloride on the bottom. So I'll put 95.3 grams of magnesium chloride on the bottom and a mole of magnesium chloride on top because these two are equivalent. We've gone from grams of known to moles of known. Now we want to go from moles of known to moles of unknown. I have moles of MgCl2 on top. I want to get rid of it, so I need moles of MgCl2 on the bottom. <coughs> and then I need the moles of what we want on the top right here. Uh, in this problem, two moles of chromium chloride will produce three moles of uh, magnesium chloride. So for every three moles of this stuff, you need two moles of this. So three moles of magnesium chloride and go on the bottom and two moles of chromium chloride go on the top. So we've gone from moles of known to moles of unknown. Get the magnesium chlorides to cancel to leave us with the moles of chromium chloride, which is the uh, moles of unknown that we want. Okay, now we want to go from moles of unknown to grams of unknown. I have moles of chromium chloride on top. I want to get rid of it, so I need moles of chromium chloride on the bottom. And then we'll put 159 grams of chromium chloride on top because one mole of chromium chloride weighs 159 grams per mole. Okay, so we've gone grams of known, moles of known, moles of unknown to grams of unknown. All right, so grams of magnesium chloride cancel. Moles of magnesium chloride cancel. Moles of chromium chloride cancel. And we're left with grams of chromium chloride. So 0.84 times 2 times 159 divided by the product of these two numbers give us 0.934 grams of chromium chloride. So what that means is if you want to make 0.84 grams of product, you need 0.934 grams of this starting material. Let's try another one. Water can be decomposed to form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So in this example, a sample of uh, H2O is broken into its elements and yields 4.70 grams of H2. How many grams of O2 are also produced? All right, so <clears throat> let's see if we can identify the known and the unknown. Okay, yields 4.70 grams of H2. Since they're telling us the grams of H2, that's our known. 4.70 grams, this is the known. How many grams of oxygen are also produced? So they're asking for the grams of oxygen. So since they're asking for how many grams of oxygen, this is going to be our unknown. Question mark grams unknown. So notice that the known H2 and the unknown O2 are both products. So it's also possible to have problems where the, both the known and the unknown are reactants. So the known and the unknown, they don't have to be on opposite sides of the arrow. They can be on the same side, and they can be on the right side, or they can be on the uh, left side. All right, well, let's see if we can solve this. H2 is our known, so we have to figure out how much one mole of H2 weighs. It's 2.02 grams per mole. And then the unknown, O2, that's 32 grams per mole, and you'll have to figure that out yourself. 
All right, so we start with the known, put that over one, 4.7 grams of H2. We're gonna go from grams of known to moles of known. So I have grams of H2 on top, I wanna to get rid of it. So I put 2.02 grams of H2 on the bottom and a mole of H2 on top, and we've converted from grams of known to moles of known. Now we wanna go from moles of known to moles of unknown. I have moles of H2 on top, I wanna to get rid of it, so I need moles of H2 on the bottom. And we wanna convert it into moles of unknown, so I need moles of O2 on top. Looks like every time two moles of H2 are made, one mole of O2 is made with it. So we have two moles of O2 on the bottom and one mole of O2 on top. So we've gone from moles of known to moles of unknown. Now we want to go moles of unknown to grams of unknown. Moles of O2 is on top. I want to get rid of it, so I need a mole of O2 on the bottom. And then one mole of O2 weighs 32 grams. All right. So grams of H2 cancel, moles of H2 cancel, moles of O2 cancel, and you're left with grams of O2. 4.7 times 32 divided by the product of these numbers will give you 37.2 grams of O2. So what this means is that if you decompose water and you end up with 4.7 grams of hydrogen gas, 37.2 grams of oxygen are gonna be made along with it. That's all it means. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture Number 58, Stoichiometric Mass-to-Mass -mass Conversion. Now I should add that I'm going to make another lecture that shows you a shortcut of how to do these math problems. That's going to be the next lecture, Chemistry Lecture Number 59, because I'm aware that some people have difficulty with this stoichiometric conversion, and I've created a shortcut method for people who uh, struggle with that type of calculation. Thanks for watching.